When we think of science fiction, we usually think of fantasies and futuristic settings. Remember the TV shows Star Trek and Twilight Zone. But how much do you know about science fiction's role in African American literature and music? Of course, there's Parliament Funkadelic's Mothership and the sci-fi books by award-winning writer Octavia Butler. Here to help us expand our knowledge of science fiction's connection to the black experience are sci-fi authors Keith Owens and Cornelius Fortune of Detroit Inc. Pum Publishing. Welcome to Detroit. Thanks, Dan. <laughs> American Black Journal. Uh, so let's start off with you guys and your, your work. Uh, what, tell me about the books that you're writing, uh, the sci-fi books, and uh, uh, how they fit into this genre. Well, the, uh, the book that I have is, you know, The Mayonnaise Murders, and of course, I mean, we have a, a series. That series, you've been right, as we have part two is out, and we have a function coming up on April 18th at Page's Bookshop. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll also, also be talking about black science fiction, and the whole idea, I think, is basically just the concept of the other is what it is. I right. mean, you know, The Mayonnaise Murders is a, is a book that was kind of way, very far out there, basically, you know, a thing called Mayo Mad, which is used to create, which is a drug, which is used mayonnaise to create, you know, and of course we have ha half human, half chicken hybrids and a whole bunch of, of the course. crazy things running around, you know, which just, just naturally appear in my head, right. which tells you something about me. But, um, but that, that's the whole thing about science fiction. You can just stretch your imagination as far, but it also can, is a commentary on, on real life right. things that are it's going that on. It's that connection right. to a real life struggle or, or narrative that, that makes science fiction exactly. work. Exactly. Cornelius? Yes, and uh, you know, one of the things that I enjoy doing is writing um, science fiction poetry. I've actually had more success doing poetry uh, than doing the science fiction short stories. Than uh, uh, stories. Um, I mean, although I've had some published, uh, but primarily um, using verse and meter and things like that uh, is an interesting way of basically connecting the image, I guess, um, so that you're, you're dealing with the concepts, you know, the science fiction concepts of future, um, and more importantly, I think, which people forget, science fiction is not about the future. You see the future. Right. It's always about the present. It's always about It's always now. a commentary on Or the past, even. Or the past. Right. And, you know, one of the things that I'd love to see is someone take a, you know, like an alternate history and kind of say, well, what would have happened if this didn't happen? Right. You know, um, slavery and things like that. That would be a great novel. If the Civil War had turned exactly. out differently or, exactly. or hadn't happened, uh, what would what would America look what like? And actually, some of the earliest sci-fi has done that. I mean, there were some. I think it's a Duma. I mean, written back as far back in the 1800s. You know, where there was more. Was more that's what we call alternate. You know, they call. Um, I didn't even call sci-fi <laughs> by, by that, that term. Right. But they were. That they began. African American writers were writing about alternate realities yeah. about exactly like what you're saying, you know, where if slavery didn't happen, what, how, you know, if, if something had gone the other way, you know, and that's, right. and, um, and you mentioned Problem Funkadelic, which one, because the whole idea is, is what if, you know, and also just looking beyond, you know, in terms of, you know, things are, are this way here, how would things be if we went somewhere right. else? Right, if, yeah. if we weren't here with our history, right. how would an alternate history. Be? You know, it, it, it seemed like when, when I was a kid in the 70s and 80s, if black people showed up, in science fiction films, it was as the first person to get killed, right? <laughs> the black guy's gonna get it first. Um, we've come a long way, though, uh, in, in terms of the, the, the roles that, that African Americans play and in terms of how the stories frame uh, the African American experience. Right, well, um, I think the, a good example of that is The Matrix. You know, in terms of the storyline, I mean, in, in the sense that it's not just the, as you said, it's not just the black character, or obviously not the first person gets killed off, but also they're just they're just part of the story, you know, and they're in right. different different in different parts. So it's it's not, it's not just one, the black guy or maybe black guy and black woman, but there's all kind of you know black people in all levels throughout the story yeah. to the point where you're just looking at it as that's. That's the story. You they're know, not you, there because they're black. Because they're black, they right? They just happen to be African Americans in right. the same role as, as, as another. Everyone else, you know, and, 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 it's, and it more accurately reflects, I mean, the world. I mean, yeah. whereas, you know, whereas this is a, a multicultural world. I mean, so this is what you're looking at. So I think that's, and uh, sci fi has been at, at the forefront of that in a lot of ways for a while. Yeah. I mean, I always think of Will Smith in uh, uh, Independence Day as another. You know, that's a goofy movie. <laughs> I don't think it was that great. But uh, to, to see him play the protagonist in that movie, that was something that 10, even 10 years before that, you probably wouldn't, you would probably would have seen a white actor. In oh, yeah. That role. yeah. Right. He's been in several of those. Yeah. You know, even the one with his son, which got panned. I mean, I understand. You know, uh, uh, Earth. Uh, that's right, yeah. Uh, something Earth. Yeah, I can't remember the, t unfortunately. Yeah. But then, you know, <laughs> says, which yeah. to tell you was, right there, right? Really, really didn't do too good. <laughs> but, um, but the thing I thought was interesting about it, though, was, was that. Still, you had, I mean, once again, you know, black folks who were, the, who, 
all the lead actors in that. You know, and the fact that once again it wasn't that they were the black actors; it was a black family in a situation in space coming back to Earth. You know, and it, and I think that they, I hope somebody still they hold on to that idea, even if that didn't work out at that time. Right. And of course you had M Night Shyamalan. So I don't know why they keep on giving this guy. <laughs> you know, so it's like how well that going to work. <laughs> keep, making but we keep making movies, but um, but just the concept of that. I mean, of just moving beyond and, and having just just characters drop that I think it can work real well. Right. And I think when we talk about families, um, exactly. African American families, and right. one of the best examples of that is Deep Space Nine. Right. right. And right. Uh, with uh, Captain Benjamin Sisko, there's like a whole dichotomy that's going on there in terms of you know his journey. It takes seven seasons, and what what you have there is you know his his son, his father, and you see that interaction. And again, it's not so much that hey, look at this black character. Right. Right. He's just someone that happens to be black, but there's a lot of things in that uh, in that series that sort of reflects it, it, it. There's commentary, and there's one episode that was just incredible where the staff, well, I'm sorry, not the staff, but the um, the entire cast kind of, uh, they, they were recasted without makeup, and it was like in the 1940s, no, 50s, and Benjamin Sisko was a black science fiction writer, and you sort of dealt with that whole story of right. okay he had this story that he wanted to print and they said no you can't do that you know it's not <laughs> right. and you know so I, I think that was just I mean I thought it was yeah. one of the greatest well, and things. Star Trek was was you know legendary for that sort of conscious uh, depiction of of race and and racial struggle uh, in America and and it was panned uh, largely when it came out by people who resisted the idea that you could have African Americans and white people working together in oh, space yeah. and, and doing these things. Oh yeah, because they didn't have, um, and the, because the black roles they had were not step and fetch it roles. Right. You know what I mean? They were they were playing, you know, actually, you know, straight serious characters and uh, they're in Twilight Zone as well. I mean, they had right. you know, episodes right. where they just, they, they pushed and they resisted that and they were way ahead of their, way ahead of their time. Yeah, that. yeah. I, I'm wondering as as kids, how how you guys got interested in writing sci-fi, given that, uh, you know, it wasn't an obvious, it wasn't an obvious place for African Americans to be, to be working. I mean, what, what was it about uh, that, that work that really, that really inspired you? Well, you know, for me, it was always about imaginative literature. You know, it started with comic books. And from comic books, I started to explore um, other worlds, you know, in terms of, um, you know, TV, movies, particularly movies. Um, you know, Star Wars obviously is, yeah. although that tends to be more space opera than science fiction. So, um, but it definitely started from there, um, just reading comics, um, and I just, I love the, you know, I talk about imagery all the time, but it's, it's, it's the imagery, it's the imagery of space, it's the imagery of the planets, and I, that just connected with me. Um, one of the earliest, I think, connections I had to science fiction was Doctor Who. And it was on Channel 56. Sure, Detroit. yeah. And it was just, Still it was is. the most bizarre, <laughs> right, it was one of the most bizarre things I'd ever seen. I was like eight years old and watching this guy with a scarf run around <laughs> all the planets. <laughs> and I'm like, I just was enthralled by yeah. it. And I said, I want it more. So I, it was definitely probably Doctor Who, Star Wars, um, and comic books that just sort of drew me into that world. Yeah, I mean, the comic book uh, thing is, is uh, uh, sort of a parallel sort of story to this. Uh, I, I've always thought that comics did a better job earlier than than I think film did of showing oh, yeah. that diversity in there, and there were more African Americans in those roles. Oh yeah, the graphic novel part, you know, sure. I think just being able to show people being able to see it, and I just think like I said, the imagination was much more evident. Yeah. I think in comic books, you know, very much so. I mean, I think you're right, they're very much more than. Uh, than film, they were they were ahead of that, and I think um, with me, it, it wasn't comic books necessarily that got me. Although I love comics, I mean, I was probably the only kid in, in fourth grade who was reading Bullfinch's mythology, you know. <laughs> but uh, but it was but it was the, the idea of something being way beyond because because that was from mythology, which is kind of a far leap. But just you know, I mean, I, I always love to read, obviously. But when you start talking about mythology, and then everything there, things that just weren't what you saw, but but what was beyond. I'm right. something else. The, the fact that you could create a universe. You know, and I think regular fiction is great, which I love. But when, but science fiction, you can create planets, you can right. create entire species, create backstory. And I think that the, it was always fascinating to me, from H. G. Wells, you know, to Jules Verne, to you know, some of my favorites, where they created an entire universe with its own from laws, nothing. You know, from nothing. Yeah. And I think that that to me has just been, fa it just gives you such a wide, uh, you know, wide I mean, canvas. That's the to paint genius on. of uh, Harry Potter, which is right. What 
exactly. uh, for my kids, I think it's framing the reading of their childhood. Uh, and, the, you know, there's an entire world there really? that doesn't exist, but that, that, that she thought up. Exactly. And speaking of another uh, film that could have used a few more uh, diverse characters. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. A lot of black folks in Harry Potter. <laughs> but we can, we can overlook that. <laughs> what, what is it that, that should be inspiring kids today, though, with, with science fiction? What, what, what can they look around and find that really says, hey, I could be part of that? I think, well, I think, that, well, some of the things we've just mentioned, I mean, I think in terms of, you know, some of the things that are on, on movies, I mean, I think they're, uh, whether it's The Matrix, although that's the older for them, you know, but I think there are, there's much more to choose from, particularly in movies I'm now. I think more, unfortunately, I, I'm, I'm a reader, but I think more than in movies now than in books, although you mentioned Harry Potter, you uh -huh. know, which is also, although it's not, <laughs> it needs to be much more diverse. Yeah. But there are, there are more things to choose from where you can look at, and there's also a movement, I should say, though, which is very important, and if you, if you, you know, hashtag we need diverse books, actually, um, is is a very much of a link because there's a movement, particularly among children's literature, to provide more diverse reading for kids, and, right. it, and that includes you know you know sci-fi, fantasy, et cetera. And I think actually to a direct answer to your question, I think that's probably a good place to go because there is a, a very a strong conscious movement to provide more diverse literature for younger readers yeah. in recognition of the fact that there's there's so many like you said like with Harry Potter as Harry Potter as good as it is or other books they just have not not diversified. Yeah, not so everything is, is there, diverse. but there's there's a lot of literature out there that's great for young readers uh, that needs to be brought more to the forefront and there's a push for that so I think that's where that can, can yeah. go. Do you see, do you see young uh, sort of aspiring science fiction writers coming up in the African-American community right now? You know I don't I don't see as many as I would like although many of us are kind of working under the radar. Uh, I know that uh, uh, a few years ago, I was nominated for a Rising Award, which is kind of the equivalent of a yeah. Hugo and Nebula. Right. For oh, poetry, yeah. Science, no, poetry. that's a big deal. And, uh, <laughs> but, you know, I don't, I, I could probably, I looked at all the lists of the, of the the winners, and I don't really think there was anyone there that was African American. Yeah. I just think what we're doing is we're not making a big deal out of the, of the color. We're just doing the work. And, um, but that said, I think that we need to look at not just books, not just um, television. I mean, there's video games, and there are these great stories that are going on, intricate stories yeah. that are told by people of all races. So I think the the, the way to sort of get them interested, because they're already interested, right. you know, let's just say it's okay to do this, okay to pr produce this, because I think as African Americans, the one thing that they always want to do is put you into protest literature, right, right. or street literature. Right. It's like. No, what if that's not what I'm interested in? Right. So why? What if I just want to tell a good story? Tell a good story. Doesn't have to have that. That's right. That's and true. use your that's imagination. That's very important. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you guys for being here, and uh, good luck diversifying <laughs> this important field. <laughs> Honored. Yeah. yeah. Thank you.